What's up, guys? Sean Black at FM Evolution. Welcome back to another show. We're here with Randy Olson with Pro FMI and Daryl Rounds, uh, FMA CEM from GM. Welcome to the show, guys. How are you doing? Hey, thanks, Sean. Uh, I'm doing pretty good. That is a mouthful. You guys, you guys got some certifications behind this thing. Been doing this for alphabet a soup, man. Alphabet soup. <laughs> Listen, there is so much to cover today. We're going to be talking about a huge subject for organizations, diversity, uh, uh, equality, and, and inclusion. It's a lot of stuff to cover. And uh, before we get into all that, you know, there's there's so many things we need to do and, and kind of cover. Um, I was wondering, Daryl, if you could tell us a little bit about where you come from, your background, so those who don't know you can learn more about you. Yeah, so um, again, I'm Daryl Rounds, and currently I'm an operations group manager for General Motors Company, um, headquartered in Detroit, Michigan. Um, my most recent assignment is um, responsibility for, for, for facilities management at our world headquarters at the Renaissance Center, along with um, a small portfolio of sites, about 32 sites that we call regional facilities operations that are scattered throughout the country. Um, as a matter of fact, this past, was it Thursday? I celebrated my 24th year at General Motors. Woo! So I'm just, um, just really thankful to have been able to um, have a career as long. And it's all been in, in the facilities management realm, um, a short stint in, in um, design. Um, but, um, uh, we just, we're just, we're just thankful to be here. Outstanding, man. Well, thank you for being on the show. You have a ton of knowledge and, 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 and I'm looking and as forward you to see Sean, I represent my alma mater. You got to represent. So I know Randy's kind of feeling, <laughs> feeling kind of squeamish over there because his mascot is a rodent. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> So okay. wow, wow. So you guys know each other apparently. <laughs> Clearly. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all Randy's good friends a great here. Friend and a colleague. Yeah. That is awesome. Randy, of course, is uh from Pro FMI, and you guys are our live sponsor. Thank you so much for being our sponsor of the show. Uh, but for those who are new and haven't listened to the show before, tell us really a little bit about what you guys do. Yeah, so I appreciate it, Sean. Thanks yeah. for having me back. And I, I think this is month number five That's uh, it. Of, of doing the Pro FM show. Uh, before I get into that, I'm just going to ask Daryl. So if, if you've been there 24 years, they hired you when you were five or what? I mean, <laughs> um, yeah, so, so Daryl and I are good buddies. And, you know, it's kind of a case study. And we're, we're from very different backgrounds. And um, we're just we're just fast and great friends. Uh, so here at ProFM, we put together a great program around uh, facility management and, and everything a facility manager needs to know to uh, effectively run a facility, both from a technical standpoint and from a soft skill standpoint. And, you know, in, back in January, we talked to Stormy Friday on this podcast, Sean, about human capital. Yep. And an important topic within human capital is you know, creating diverse and inclusive workplaces. And uh, there's no better um, individual here to talk to that than uh, Mr. Rounds. And just uh, super pleased to have him with us today. Um, but, you know, our program, again, covers everything that the FM needs to know and execute on to be an excellent facility manager and take care of their facilities. So I'm excited for this discussion today. And, um, you know, with that, we can uh, go ahead and launch in. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be good. Now, Daryl, I don't know if you know if you listen to the show, but we have this little tradition where we like to learn about what you're reading because we have this list going on and we're always adding to it. Uh, and it helps us kind of learn more about you. If you have, uh, if you can tell the listeners uh, what you're reading right now, what's the last thing you, uh, what did you finish up? Or what do you, yeah, right so um, I'm not finished with it yet, but I'm actually reading a book called Influencer The New Science of Leading Change. Ah. It's written by a group of authors, um, Granny, Patterson, Maxfield, McMillan, and Switzer. And they're the same group that um, brought to us uh, Crucial Conversations. 
So just trying to improve um, the art of influence, the art of persuasion, because in order for you to get things done in industry and business, it's very necessary for you to be able to build relationships and um, get people to do things for you. <laughs> that is awesome. You know, John Maxwell says leadership is persuasion or is influence. And uh, I, man, I have not heard of that book. And I'm so excited to add that to my list. So Outstanding. as a matter of fact, uh, it's on my desk right here. So it. it's right here. Influencer. Yeah. I love it, man. Famous plug for the authors. I won't get any part of the royalties, but here you go. <laughs> not a sponsor, bro. We love it. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, man. Well, we will add that because that's, uh, yeah, that's a good one. That, I'm going to add that to my favorites right there. I'm, that's all about the subject I'm into. Randy, what's on your list today? What do you got? Yeah, you well, I just, uh, just this week started a book called Relentless by Tim Grover. Um, so this, I read that one. yeah, yep. Yeah. So in the, uh, in the spring and summer, I coach an AAU basketball team. So the a group of girls and I'm, you know, trying to become better and become a better leader around my team. And, uh, it was an excellent book to pick up and start motoring through. So that's, that's what's currently on the list. Um, you know, I'm excited to get through it and learn more. Outstanding. Outstanding. So the question that I have for you, Randy, is are you a cleaner or are you a cooler? <laughs> I, i'm i'm a i would be more of a cooler <laughs> if you like if you don't know the answer to that question by the time you end up finish by the time you finish reading that book you'll have a, you'll have a good assessment of what you know what, what that means absolutely yep. you know i am uh i'm going through and rereading rocket fuel right now oh. uh and it's uh gino wigman and uh, mark winters Good book, really interesting. Um, you know, it's all about a workplace dynamic of the leaders and, and uh, the implementers. You know, you got a creative and, a, and someone who implements policy. Um, and, and it's really interesting. Good book, good, good read. Man, we have some great books around here. See, that's why I do that. That's why we do this. It's a good topic. All right, well, let's jump into this. Um, this is... Uh, this is one of those topics that we could go on and on for. So, uh, Daryl, you know, we to kind of hop into this, I wanted to break this down uh, as much as possible to keep it simple. And it's complex. There's no doubt. Um, so I want to kind of start with what DE and I really means in today's workplace at GM for you guys. So, um, I'm gonna to try to frame it up in the simplest terms possible. Um, about this time last year, um, basically, and um, basically in Randy's backyard, you know, we had some some events that took place um, with a gentleman by the name of Mr. George Floyd that that lit a, a powder keg, <laughs> you know, in our society. And you saw um, many um, business entities basically saying enough was enough. Um, enough was enough to systemic racism. Um, enough is enough um, to just things that, that didn't um, play into the values that um, hold dear for diversity, equity, and inclusion. And one of the one of the things that came out of that for General Motors is the fact that we have a mission to become the most inclusive company in the world um, to the point that one of our core behaviors is be inclusive. And we try to build that into the DNA of what, um, of what we do, how we act, how we work, and even how we interface um, not only with each other within the company, but how we interface uh, with those communities that um, that we're a part of. So, um, you know, it's unfortunate that things happen, and we and we we saw the the verdict that came down, which is a kind of, which just served as a reminder of progress is being made. But surely, um, there's a great deal for us to do 
uh, with respect um, in order for us to level the playing field. So. No, that, that's uh, 110% true in my belief. And um, I think that is one of the reasons I felt like this topic was important. And I know you guys brought it up. And as soon as I saw it, I was like, boom, that's something we got to talk about. That's, that's yeah. important. And we got to cover that. Yeah, and it's, Go ahead, bud. And even, even, I just like, even our meetings, um, you know, it's our custom for us to start the meeting off with um, a safety message, right? But now, um, in, in addition to the safety message, it's an inclusion message, right? And I think there's an intentionality that exists now that didn't before where, um, you know, I can actually feel um, people are actually trying to embrace, you know, the differences that make us, or that, that, that allow us to bring value um, to the table but also the idea of equity and inclusion that helps us to provide a sense of belonging um, to the organization as well. So that's cool. And that's, it's, it's, it's I mean, it's so important and, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to see companies shifting. And, and like you said, I, it's not ideal. It's definitely the circumstances are not where anyone would want them to be where this had this level of attention had to be brought and were and, and things that happened the way they did. But I'm glad that the end of this, there's some uh, a broader discussion going on to to expand this topic. Um, Randy, from your point of view, um, as it kind of takes on and relates to education process for FMs, um, could you tell us how Pro FMI kind of addresses these three topics? Yeah, so, so I think I'm gonna talk about this from a from a couple of uh, places here, Sean. So um, I think the development of the program is a, uh, is a really good case study in putting together a diverse group of individuals with a common goal to build something great. And, you know, we had a uh, team of 11 folks who we referred to as our credential commission. Daryl was a key member of that. Um, but the interesting thing about that group is we had people from all over the world, from many different backgrounds, from many different uh, parts of the world, from different religions, different, um, you know, belief systems, um, female, male, uh, later in career, younger in career. And it was just a very diverse group of individuals that came together to put together the basis of the, of the Pro-FM. And out of that, you know, one of the important things and one of the important messages that came out of that is at the end of the day, all the technical things are really important as it relates to facilities, but it always comes back to the people. It always, it, you know, fundamentally facilities, you're in the, you're in the people business and it always comes back to that. And we talked about that with Stormy, you know, back in January, mm -hmm. we talked about it with Mark Bodenshots when we talked about leadership, Mark Bodenshots from Penn State. Um, you know, when we talked about uh, leadership in, in February, and, um, you know, we, we, we always come back to that and it's about the well-being of the people. I, I would contend that a, that a really good DEI program is good for your business because it gives you a diverse offering and diverse service that you can offer to the world. And, um, you know, I think it, it's so critical and so important. So we made that a key part of that human capital portion of the Pro-FM uh, credential program. And, it, and it's clearly addressed in there you know, and it defines the terms. It talks about um, the benefits of a good DEI program. It talks about, you know, maybe some of the challenges you'll have with that, but then the advantages and, and going forward, what benefits that'll bring to the organization. So, um, you know, critical topic, um, we're not there. We're making good progress. Um, progress can, probably can't happen fast enough, but if we all kind of unite here and push this forward, we're gonna make greater progress, so. Now, I would love to get your take on the importance of DEI mission for an organization, something that you brought up. I mean, what, what, why is DEI so important? Why do we have to have a mission for this? Um, I think one of the things that we have to base, first understand and value are, you know, what diversity, equity, and inclusion are, you know, um, when you take a look at 
our society, you know, you have different people that come from all different walks of life. So that's that's the epitome of diversity. I mean, involving people from a, a range of different social and ethnic backgrounds, different genders, different religious persuasions, different sexual orientations, um, different um, ability or disability um, statuses. And then, so you have all of these different individuals, different entities, different mindsets, if you will, different experiences. And now we talk about inclusion, right? So how do we get all of those different people and different mindsets to the point where they feel like they belong? You know, so that's inclusion. And then equity, you know, has to do, has everything to do, like once everybody belongs, you know, how, like, how do we um, set ourselves up so that everyone is being treated fairly and treated the same, that there's, um, um, that, that people are being compensated, you know, for what they bring to the table, as opposed to, you know, I might like the Spartans like my manager does, you know, or um, I might not like the Gophers, <laughs> you know, like this manager does, right? So, I mean, you know, you have diversity, you have equity and inclusion, and all of those things have to be, be there in order for, um, in, in order for, for this um, to work properly. As far as an organization is concerned, an or, like the organization or the, 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 the entity has to be intentional about ensuring that um, all of these different people that are part of their organism, they belong, <laughs> that, um, that they're included and that they're treated fairly. So you have to put things in place, you have to put rules in place to ensure that those conditions are being met. And that's and that's done through a mission. So I just said at the, you know, I'm at the onset of this discussion that it's General Motors' goal to become the most inclusive um, company in the world. And we've set things in place in order for us to fulfill that mission. And I would chat, and I, I'm sure, and there are other organizations that have um, set similar goals, that have um, paved the way for similar missions. Um, it's just a matter of, of being intentional about um, pursuing, pursuing that path and fulfilling that mission. Where do, you, where do you think we start at though? I mean, for some organizations, this is, uh, this is hard. Uh, you know, they're not sure where to do. I mean, Daryl, before the show, you, you mentioned um, examining oneself, is this, is this the beginning of implementing a DE&I or in an organization? Um, there's, there's an old adage um, that I like to employ from time to time. It's 10 words, 20 letters. If it is to be, it is up to me. <laughs> if it is to be, it is up to me. And in order for us to affect any kind of change, um, we have to look at ourselves in a mirror to see uh, where we stand, right? So I think when you take a look at all of the things that have transpired over the last year, even in the midst of this pandemic with respect to the media portrayal of the racial injustice, um, just, you know, <laughs> I'm even awed, like floored by the fact that a Confederate flag was being waved through the <laughs> epicenter of our government, <laughs> you yeah. know? And if anybody knows, um, you know, the, um, the connotation behind that, you know, it was there was there was some intent um, behind those actions, which 
speaks contrary, <laughs> you know, to yep. diversity, equity, um, and inclusion. Um, so at the end of the day, I have to look at myself in the mirror and and speak to my intentions. Um, I had the opportunity to um, take part in a, um, a, a diversity, equity, and inclusion certificate program. Um, here's another shameless plug uh, through the University of South Florida, um, the MUMA um, College of Business. And um, there was a lecturer, I guess one of our guest lecturers, uh, Valerie Ale Alexander. Um, she, she made the statement and it, it was so simple, but it was so profound. She said, it doesn't matter what your intentions are. It's all about the outcomes, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when I look at myself, I have to examine um, not only what I say, what I do, how I behave, and as good intentioned <laughs> or as, as some of those thoughts, um, speech, um, actions may be, um, the only thing that matters is the outcome, right? Yep. You know, I'm sure that there's a lot of people that intended, um, they, they didn't intend to offend anybody when they did this, but the outcome was that you offended them. But if they would have took the time to think about what they said or what they did before the action, then the outcome would have been different. And we we have to be very, very intentional. I'm gonna use that word probably a lot tonight. We have to be intentional about examining ourselves to ensure that how we behave and conduct ourselves is in line with the mission um, that we're saying that we're aligning ourselves to. It starts with us. I love Michael that. Jackson said, I'm looking at the man in the mirror, right? You know, we use, we use that a lot in our organization about taking a look in the mirror. And I think you're right. I think it does start with self. All right, guys, we are running right up against a commercial break. We're going to thank our sponsors right now. And then we'll be right back with Daryl and Randy. Welcome back to FM Evolution, you guys. We are here with Randy Olson with Pro FMI and Daryl Rounds at GM. And we have been covering uh, DE and I for the last half hour or so. And I tell you what, there is so much to cover and it's such a big sub subject. And, and right before the break, we we're talking about uh, self-examination is, is really the first step in implementing uh, you know, a, a mission or, or a policy for DE&I. And, and uh, for the listeners who are out there saying, okay, how do I go from self-evaluation to looking at this in an organization of, uh, you know, and implementing it? What's the next step? Yeah, uh, so. What do you think? So, so before we even go to the next step from self-examination, let's be clear. Yeah. There are these things that exist that are called stereotypes and biases, right? And most people, you know, they get all, oh, you know, I'm not biased. Every one of us has biases. You know, one of my biases is towards green and white, you know? Um, just think of like, I just give you an exercise. If you were to um, list like all like 10 people that are the closest to you, right? And then take a look at like, well, why are they close to you? Do they look like you? Do you spend the most time with them? Do they have, what do they have in common with you? What, what What's different about them um, and you? So um, all of us are biased, right? And then what ends up happening because of our biases, we tend to stereotype individuals based on um, information that we may have learned, whether it was right or wrong, or information that might have been fed to us. Um, so 
as far as self-examination is concerned, we can't let ourselves get into the trap of allowing those stereotypes and biases to govern how we act because one, like when you do that, you're prone to get yourself in trouble and then you start acting according to those stereotypes and biases in a discriminatory way. And when you discriminate against someone, that's when um, the law comes in because now um, you're breaking the law. So, so how can I move from self-examination um, to an organizational examination? Well, one of us, I mean, all of us have to realize that we can affect change within our realm of influence, hence the book. So one of the one of the one of the one of the key things is is that if you sense that something is wrong, um, don't be afraid to respectfully and boldly um, call it out. And hopefully, um, you know, and you know, I would be remiss to think that a lot of organizations um, don't have a culture where speaking out against wrong is accepted, but sometimes you have to do the uncomfortable thing and do the right thing. And, and, that, and that's a challenge. Um, there's, a, there's a quote that I like to quote from the, the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, he says that the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comforts and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. So that was written, in, that, that was quoted in 1963. But because like we've progressed, I, I can say there's the ultimate measure of a human or a, a man or a woman is not where they stand in moments of comfort and convenience, but where they stand at times of challenge and controversy. So whether you're, whether you're a man or a woman, <laughs> You, you you have against injustice and, and you've seen that um you've seen that where whole companies has have basically created platforms that say we're, we're not we're not we're not going to stand for injustice anymore um we're gonna we're gonna value um the differences um that that make us who we are and um we're just going to we're just gonna be great human beings. Woo, man. You gotta come back on this show. I tell you what, right out. <laughs> Some value bombs. God, that was good. I uh, I don't even know where to go from there. Randy? Yeah, so the only <laughs> thing I, I, would, I would weigh in on that is um, you know, the opportunity to learn, so. You know, I've had the opportunity to to spend a lot of time with Daryl and had the opportunity to learn be, because of him. Um, and, and again, we have completely different backgrounds in life, you know, um, but it's been such a pleasure to learn about him and, and understand and then take that step back and be introspective, look in the mirror and understand um, where I've made mistakes, which have been many, many in my life. Um, and, and, and improve and move forward, right? And I, I'm naturally interested in people. And I think if we could, as a human race, get back to being naturally interested in everybody and, and embrace all that, we're gonna be a lot better off. I mean, we just have a better organization, right? When we have so differing viewpoints and we can have reasonable discourse around things. Um, even as it relates to Michigan State and Minnesota Gophers, right? So the reason why I'm smiling so big yep. is because, um, and this is the beauty of just trying to get to know people, right? So I was, I was in my car, I was parking my car, and I was about to go into the gym, and I said, "Let me call Randy," because I just, I just had to. <laughs> I, had to, I had to stop. So, like, I don't know if you guys ever watched the show Fargo, right? 
right? Yeah. So it's based in Minnesota, right? I said, well, Randy's from Minnesota, you know? And I was like, they said, you, I mean, because like, I, I, I spent four, I spent four summers in Minnesota as, a, as an intern uh, for another company um, in my college years. And I never heard people talk like the people on Fargo. I never, I never heard it. So I was like, so when I, so I, when I watched the show, I was like, man, he, I mean, they, they must be exaggerating, right? They, they're exaggerating this. So then I called Randy. I was like, well, Randy, tell, give me the real, right? I was like, hey, Randy, what's up, man? How you doing? He said, hey, Daryl, how are you? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, Randy, he answer me this question. Do people from Minnesota, like, have you ever seen the show Fargo? He's like, yeah. I said, I've seen the movie too. He said, Randy, do people from Minnesota talk like this for real? And what did you say, Randy? I said, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> it was the day after Christmas, to be accurate here. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I'm like, sure. I'm like, so the I think that's just that's just a simple example of being willing to reach out to get to know more about somebody's background and even culture, right? So I'm, I'm still waiting for Randy um, to call me and ask, <laughs> ask me something that's pointed. <laughs> return, the, return that call? Yeah. Well, in FM, because we talk about FM on the show, and, and this is a, a, a cool subject to integrate into FM, Randy, do you think that there's enough education in the FM workplace for this? Or what's your opinion on that? Well, you know, as we talked about early in the show, it's certainly addressed within the, uh, within the pro FM, but, there, but there's a lot of good um, DEI education available and, and continuing learning available um, through reading books. Um, you know, there's a great Malcolm Gladwell book, you know, Talking to Strangers, that will help you, you know, expand your, your view into this. But, you know, the certificate program that Daryl's involved in, um, I asked Daryl to send me um, recently some information about additional programs that I could look at from a certificate standpoint. Those are also available. Um, you know, and it's, and it's critical for the FM to get um, further education on this topic. We're delivering service to a diverse audience. So having a diverse organization will better help you deliver a diverse service um, regardless of the industry you're in, whether it's, you know, GM, whether it's the retail space, the restaurant space, um, that, that'll be critical. So, um, you know, certainly addressed within ProFM, there's other, you know, there's other great materials out there to learn more um, about this topic. I feel like organizations really more than ever should be looking at this topic not just in FM, but really throughout the entire organization. But I think in FM as well, because FM really covers and touches a lot of different people in different parts of the organization and has so much responsibility um, when it comes to, uh, you know, the operation of, of the organization. Daryl, one of the things that you brought up and continue to bring up really is intentionality and accountability of ensuring, you know, DEI values are, are being upheld. What steps does an organization like GM take to ensure that that they get it right? So one of the things that we did, um, we, we created a position, um, Chief of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And... Um, the person that's actually doing that role, I know them personally. I've, I've worked for them, and I know um, the values that they possess. And we thought it, the company thought it that important for us to create a position to basically champion um, those values. So, um, Likewise, I think a lot of other companies have followed suit um, and put their money where their mouth is, to basically put some human capital um, behind um, the initiative. See what I did there, Randy? Human I capital. Know. I see it. Yeah. I saw it. I got you. <laughs> and um, 
And then also just basically practicing what we preach, right? Yeah. Um, if we really say that we want to be the most inclusive um, company in the world, now, be, now it has to become a part of our corporate DNA. So um, we live it, we speak it, uh, we breathe it. Um, um, I think also that companies really need to take a hard look um, at their at the demographics, right? To ensure that the makeup the makeup of of, of their structure is indicative of what diversity, equity, and inclusion um, looks like. Um, and you set goals um, to achieve it, right? Um, because you can't hire you can't hire somebody based on a on the color of their skin, but you can set goals um, to make sure that your organization is reflective of diversity um, and inclusion. Also, there needs to be a culture where people feel empowered to do the right thing. And there's no fear of reprisal if they call out the wrong things, right? Um, that's what being bold is all about. And people taking personal accountability, accountability for being their brothers and sisters keeper as it pertains um, to establishing this culture. I think that's, um, I, I, oh man. Jack Welch was really great. Uh, he's one of my favorite leaders and he's always very candid. And I think having that strength in your organization to be candid with people and, and, and having the courage to be able to step out and say when you see something, uh, but also having the culture to support that is huge. I mean, in the end of the, at the end of the day, when it comes down to an organization being productive, having a diverse group of people support that it's going to create an organization that is stronger. More, more heads on the table, better ideas, a diverse group is gonna do that. And then even with that, Sean, you know, studies show that companies are way more profitable when they, when they embrace diversity and inclusion as opposed um, to those that, that don't. And then if you just take a look at the, the, the demographics of, of, of the workforce is getting more diverse um, day by day. So um, whether we want to believe it or not, <laughs> whether or not we want to embrace it or not, uh, we're, we're going to, we're, we're faced with diversity. Yeah. And, it's and just how, it's how we deal with it and how we manage it. Yeah. And that can mean a lot of things, right? So it, it could mean many different age groups. It could mean, it could mean many different things. Um, and if we can embrace it and be intentional about it and go find the right individuals to fill the right spots, you know, we're, we're a much better organization. I love that. And, you know, and, and as we are now kind of not quite, but almost post pandemic, you know, we're starting to, to live and work without COVID, or at least the, the light is there at the end of this tunnel, but we will be rehiring and expanding. And, and how do we you know, create intentionality around recruitment and retention when it comes to DE&I? Like what, what's your thoughts on it, Daryl? Yeah, so when you think about the workforce now, you can drive by like a fast food restaurant and it's closed because they can't find any employees. And that's- Yes, that's happening right now. That's happening like right now, even right as now. we record this podcast. So just translate that into what we have to face in the, in the FM industry. Um, at General Motors, we call them uh, community keepers, but- um, most people call them janitorial or custodians, right? Um, 
COVID is going to, like the pandemic is going to end. And we're going to have to bring people back, but will they, will they be available um, to work? And um, as far as, you know, within the FM, I did a study on um, just the demographics of FM um, in an article that I wrote for Facilities Maintenance Decisions. And I'm sad, sadly to say, you know, the FM industry for the most part is a white male dominated um, industry. You know, it's, it's, it's out there. But there's coming a time where, you know, we're going to need more than white men yeah. <laughs> basically to do this work. So if we have a mindset to embrace diversity, then it just makes um, for better business to be able to take care of the people. So we really have to be um, intentional about uh, recruitment um, just because that, I mean, just as an example, if a person um, is female, we can't have the bias that she, she can't do what this 250 pound uh, male can do, you know? If she, if she, just as an example, if she applies for the job and she's able and she, she's, she's capable of doing the job, um, as an example, we just have to um, trust that she will do the job. Um, and then as far as recruitment, like what are we going to do in order to create a culture where people feel like they belong and where they want to stay? And um, I live by the adage that if you take care of your people, you'll take care of your business. So. I like that. And yes, I think we intentionality needs to be and accountability needs to be a focus as we hire uh, moving forward. And in FM, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I'm really encouraged to say in the last, even the last five years, I've seen a lot of new faces in facilities um, and a, a, a more diversity for sure. Um, even on the contractor side for us, as we, we have technicians, we are hiring female technicians. And you know what? They're awesome. <laughs> they do a great job. And I'm so excited. You know, we have that focus on diversity and, and equity and inclusion here. And I'm, I, I think it's changing. I think, um, to your point, the the majority is is uh, is not very diverse, but I think I, I'm I'm hopeful to see a change in FM a lot. I think it's but to my to to the point that I made earlier, mm -hmm. somebody made a decision to 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 be intentional about their hiring practices, right? Yes. Because if you would rewind about 10, 15 years ago, that probably wouldn't have happened. 100% but agree. It starts, it starts with each and every one of us to make the right decisions uh, for the business. Outstanding. Well, boy, guys, we're going to wrap up here. We've been going. This has been like almost an hour. <laughs> I've had so much fun. This subject is huge. I think we could talk so much more about it. Um, as we wrap up here, Randy, I, I want to kind of ask, um, how, can, uh, how can people in FM really learn more about you know diversity equity and, and inclusion i yep. know you guys have a program yep yep so re reference a couple times in the program uh certainly um information about it there and great great uh, content and training around it there um talked earlier about you know kind of looking outside of that and looking for additional information um information about our program on profmi.org is a great place to go um you know getting tapped into individuals like Daryl Rounds. You learn a lot every time you talk to him. So uh, Daryl, I don't want to overcommit you, but um, <laughs> you know, it just, uh, I, I, uh, I, I value the relationship. I value the friendship and um, you know, it's just been such a great learning experience for me to be around this guy that joined us today on this podcast, which I'm very thankful for. That's why well, I love this podcast. Because <laughs> I get to learn, I get to meet all these new people and and learn so much about all these these topics, uh, and, and get to meet uh, uh, people like Daryl. 
Yeah, thanks, thanks, um, Sean, and um, in representing um, and being a, a proud employee of General Motors, um, you can always go to the to the GM website at www.gm.com, and if you want to learn more about what we're doing um, within the realm of diversity, equity, and inclusion, you can just say www.gm.com forward slash diversity. And it'll take you to a site that gives you access to our diversity and inclusion report. And um, you can learn more about um, what we're doing to attract, retain, encourage employees of all backgrounds to drive results. So talk about intentionality. That's it right there. You guys got an entire program, people committed to that position website material everything is is lined up that's why uh, i was excited to have you on here and, and learn about gm's culture um because i think that's just it's outstanding um i kind of one last thing daryl i wanted to get from you for those who uh who who want to see uh or, or actually what do you see as the most important thing for diversity equity and, and inclusion challenges for fm today and and how do, how do we face it I think um, it's all about being intentionality, uh, uh, being intentional about the decisions that we make and how we and how we behave and how we speak. Um, you know, we really have to take inventory within ourselves to see where we stand, right? And there's different ways that you can do that. You can do, um, you can actually do a bias inventory, right? Um, you can find out what your what your bias towards and what you're biased against. And the, the the whole point is is to understand who you are, and be willing to make the change for the better, because when you do that you'll be able to affect change, not only within yourself, but within your surroundings. And then you'll be able to transform um, your community um, and the lives that are attached to you. And I think that's where, that's how we become more diverse because as we do that, um, we innately challenge ourselves to think outside the box. Um, it's an uncomfortable space. It takes us out of our comfort zone, right? Because we're not used to it. But I never would have thought that I would have um, developed a relationship with Randy such as I have. And I just, and even, I hope Randy doesn't um, mind me sharing this, but when the whole George um, Floyd Boy, um, death happened, and there was someone rest in Minnesota. Um, Randy called me and asked me how I was doing. You know, he didn't have to do that. <laughs> um, and, 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 and several of my um, of my white friends did that, right? And several of my white friends didn't. <laughs> I would just keep I would just keep it real, you know, because some people don't feel comfortable going there but it's about stepping out, out of your comfort zone. And even when those conversations, you know, as we build trust with one another, we're able to express our true feelings and then we get an understanding. And once we get an understanding, we can act for the better. So, um, as I said, as I said at the beginning, it all starts with each and every one of us. We have to make the personal decision to want to do the right thing. Once we've been equipped with the, um, enough knowledge to make the right decision. Well, I tell you because what, there, I, there, go ahead, buddy. I'm gonna say this one thing: there's there's a lot of people that know to do right, and they just won't do it. And as a result, because of their pride. Um, because of their preconceived notions, because of their prejudices, 
because of their biases, if you will, they make bad decisions. And as a result, people are disenfranchised. And then when you translate it to business, you're not as profitable as you can be because you shortchange yourself. Because just think if you if you were if you were more diverse, equitable, and inclusive, there's a bigger audience that you can reach uh, for whatever goods or services um, that you provide. So I, I've advice. said enough. Great advice. Listen. I- we're going to be friends because I, I get, I, I get learned so much. I felt like I learned so much on, on this show today and I know there's so much more to cover and I wish we had more time, but we just don't. Randy, for those who want to connect with you on pro FMI, where do they go, sir? Where do we go? Yeah. Oh, it's uh, profmi.org. That's uh, a good place to get information. My contact info is there and information about the program. Um, you know, video and all sorts of good information there. So profami.org. Outstanding. And I will thank you guys for being the live sponsor here. ProFMI is a great program. I recommend it to anyone. Uh, and I'm so uh, blessed really to have Randy come on the show and bring amazing guests like Daryl Rounds. Thank you, sir, for being on the podcast today. I've learned a lot. Whatever. And I am so glad that you are on to share with our audience today because I, I think it's a ton of value for them thank you so much thank you for having me sean and thanks randy for inviting me yep thank you daryl thanks sean uh, and everyone from fm evolution team we thank you for being fans and, and looking uh, uh uh and watching us on youtube and if you're there hey feel free to hit subscribe and leave us a comment we'd love to hear from you and wherever you're listening to this podcast on your favorite platform Hey, hit subscribe because we want to we want to come to you every day with and leave you this value and bring this information to you and uh, and we'd love to hear from you. So leave a comment. Until next time for, for all of our team. Thank you guys, and we'll see you at the next show.